Hey everybody, Charles here. Welcome to Bankrupt's Living. In today's video, we're going to be talking about a shortage of medical personnel that's happening across the United States right now, even as we speak. Um, there have been several different websites and uh, news media that have covered this, and it's, uh, it's kind of becoming alarming uh, for many places. And one example we want to show you today and, and use in this to show what's going on is the uh, nurses that were fired in Houston a few weeks back. And I'm going to read through the article just a little bit to show you what's going on. And the headline here in the Foundation for uh, Economic uh, Education says Massive Nurse Shortage Hits Houston weeks after 150 unvaccinated nurses and hospital workers fired. So, it said Houston hospitals have reached a breaking point and it's after 150 hospital workers were fired by the Houston Methodist Hospital, one of several hospitals that are struggling right now. It said Jennifer Bridges knew what was coming when her director at Houston Methodist Hospital called her up in June to inquire about her vaccination status. Bridges, a 39-year-old registered nurse, responded, absolutely not. That should make one think, shouldn't it? When nurses and doctors uh, are refusing to take this shot, should make one think about it. When asked if she was vaccinated or had made an effort to get vaccinated, she was terminated on the spot. We all knew where we were getting fired, Bridges, 39, told CBS News. We knew unless we took that shot to come back, we were getting fired today. There were no ifs, ands, or buts. So these people had principles that they believed in and they stood on them, regardless if it cost them their jobs. Bridges was one of more than 150 workers fired by Houston Methodist Hospital. Said all last year through the COVID pandemic, we came to work and did our jobs, said uh, Kara Shepard, a labor and delivery nurse who joined Bridges and other workers in an unsuccessful lawsuit. We did what we were asked. This year, we're basically told we're disposable. Now, they work all year, the year before, without any kind of vaccine in what they, the MSN and the government, uh, uh, you know, termed as a pandemic. <clears throat> so, nobody got sick. They were all fine. They didn't spread anything or none of them got sick. But yet, when this shot became available, they were told, if you don't take the shot, you're going to be terminated. Again, that should make one think and wonder why it is mandatory for everybody. But let's, let's scroll on down here just a little bit. I'm going to show you how this works, and then we're going to get into the medical supply part of it right here. Uh, this is called the Cobra Effect, what took place here. And uh, it's unclear to what extent Houston Methodist's decision to fire 150 unvaccinated medical workers exacerbated the nursing crisis. For perhaps obvious reasons, hospital officials have been mum on the issue. What we know is that Houston hospitals that did not abruptly fire 150 employees struggled to deal with the COVID spike, and in some cases, people died as a result. So it's safe to presume that Houston Methodist's decision to fire 150 employees a few weeks before the Delta variant arrived in force didn't make the situation any better and probably made it much worse. So these people, buddy, <laughs> these nurses have been on the firing line in these hospitals all through this first pandemic and been asked to work incredible shifts at times, uh, incredible hours, and under all kinds of situations and circumstances, and they did that. And then as soon as this shot became available, if they refused to take it, they were terminated. Well, thank you. Thank you very much to the executive boards of the hospitals who did this, you know. Uh, it shows right exactly where you stand. But let's look at the nurses right here just a second. It said, some may be tempted to think Houston Methodist was able to quickly replace the workers they lost, but evidence suggests this is unlikely. Apart from the broader shortage frontline nurses, are burned out. We are all tired of this. Nurses are tired of this. Texas Nurse Association CEO Cindy uh, Zolanerick wrote in a recent public letter. They're just wore out with this stuff, folks. 
they're tired of all this craziness that's going on with all this stuff. And when they were approached, these 150 nurses and medical workers at that hospital, they knew when they came into work that day, if they didn't take the shot, they were going to be fired. They refused to take it. I wonder why. They're right in there where they see and know what's going on. They see all the results of these things and the effects of these things. So the next question I have with this, as we see it now, that there is a medical shortage in the United States of America right now in our hospitals. And we've seen this coming for some time. And you know, uh, back in the 1940s, there was a shortage of medical workers in Germany. And what they did was they caused the good doctors and good medical workers through their propaganda to quit the hospitals and to quit the professions and they replaced them with people who would mind and follow the government and whatever they told them to do. And they had a term called death squads. So I'm just saying what is evident online. You can find that if you search it online. But that's what became of the hospitals and medical field in Germany. And uh, I can foresee something like that happening right here in America because I've heard different people talk about medical doctors, professionals are getting out of the field, they're quitting their practices, nurses are quitting their jobs, medical assistants are quitting their jobs because they don't want to have anything to do with this. And it is creating a shortage in quality. Let me put it like this so you'll get it. Quality doctors and nurses. So, if there is a shortage of doctors and nurses, who's going to get treated? That's a good question to ask. And they asked that right here in the North Carolina Policy Watch. We have found that one of the North Carolina hospitals has already said that if their patients are unvaccinated, that they will be, if they refuse to get vaccinated, they will be dismissing them. And that in the future, if anyone comes to the hospital for treatment and they are unvaccinated and refuse to get vaccinated, they will refuse them treatment. So where is this leading? The question is, should the unvaccinated be a lower priority for health care? That's something you need to think about, something I need to think about. We all need to think about this who feel like that it's our body and our choice when it comes to the medical field. We should have the same choice, our body, our choice, as anybody else, no matter what the field is about, it's our body. So this does rise an uncomfortable ethical question, should eligible unvaccinated people be medically targeted at the same priority? at the same priority level as the unvaccinated? Good question. So, probably not going to happen. I'll just tell you ahead of time. So here's some things we need to do. We need to be stocking up on medical supplies in our homes as a prepper. You need to have things in your preps, in your home, that you can doctor yourself with and your loved ones with. And you also need to have things, if you live in a big city, to where you have the opportunity to bug out if you needed to, to where you could move out to somebody's farm or move out to somebody's place in a rural setting or a family or something like that, that you could have things to take with you. And I encourage that greatly, to have things to take with you when you go somewhere. But one of the first things that people always need is pain relief. Listen, when situations start going bad and things start going on bad around us and we really don't have any control of them, tension arises, anxiety and stress arises, and it causes headaches. So we need pain medication for that. We need things like a set of uh, medicine, ibuprofen, uh, we need aspirin, migraine relief, naproxen sodium, all those kind of things that you can buy over the counter. Now everything I mentioned right there is over the counter pain relief medicine. And now if we're restrained to our homes and our small farms or our small uh, yard gardens or whatever it may be. Here's some other things, those uh, lidocaine patches. We've shown them in our videos before and if you care to go back and watch another video that we did on our medical supplies, you'll find several things in there that we're going to mention here and, and maybe some others also. 
but at any rate uh, you can get the uh, the patches you can get the cream uh, to uh, apply to your soreness and all these things right here I mentioned I think uh, so far can be picked up at the Dollar Tree you can't get it in large volumes like you can in other places but if you're short on cash short on money at least you can pick up some of it at the Dollar Tree uh, you can get the hot and cold gel packs that help with the pain and or gel man listen get or gel for toothache pains if, if, if you've ever dealt with tooth pains you know how valuable or gel is be sure to get you some or gel uh, wound care bandages uh, and let me let me go ahead and recommend this website to you that I'm on right here the organic prepper if you're not uh, if you're not following them I would highly recommend it because they have a lot of really good articles and that's where I'm getting this from to save from having to go through my stash and, and go through the same thing that they've mentioned here uh, but they've got a, a really good website the organic prepper uh, but again, wound care bandages, stuff like waterproof bandages, uh, sterile gauze pads. When you get cut or, or uh, get a burn, you need a gauze pad, there's, there's nothing that can replace them uh, as good as a gauze pad. But now if you can't get gauze pad, you can always cut up the older cotton sheets, wash them good in hot water, dry them, bring them right out of the dryer. And, and put them in bags and zip lock them airtight and then you've always got something to bandage with from the older cotton sheets like that. Uh, you can replace some, some of these gauze like that. Dental gauze and surgical tape, uh, self-adhesive bandage wrap, uh, tourniquets, uh, hemostatic gauze, the hemostatic gauze is what you put in a wound to stop it from bleeding. Uh, these can be from like a, a cut from an axe, a cut from a saw, a cut from a hatchet, anything like that that leaves an open wound. You can use this gauze in there to stop bleeding in it. Um, there's just all kinds of things here listed. You can look over them right here. I've got them on the page for you. Uh, I'm not going to mention every single thing. Uh, but butterfly bandage for, for minor lacerations are just wonderful little butterfly bandages. Or you pull your, uh, your pull, pull your wound together and, and place that on. It holds it together really well. Um, stir a strip for minor lacerations, zip sutures, uh, liquid bandage. You know, we had some of the liquid bandage in that thing we showed. Uh, suture kit and a skin stapler. Uh, suture supplies uh, for suture to sew people up if they get cut. You know, Cat Lady Prepper was on here last week and she said her mother had, had fallen and hit her head on the side of the chicken coop or something. And uh, um, she had to sew her mother's head up. She said it took like five stitches. So that was, uh, you know, something to think about folks you never know what these things are going to happen when they're going to happen or how you may have to take care of them um, there are antiseptic uh, wound washes antibacterial washes uh, things for bloating if you're out here you know and you can't get out to the to the stores these are things you need to be putting back ahead of time uh, things for your acid reflux if you don't uh, like tums and you can put you back some uh, things like uh, uh, apple cider vinegar with a mother in it and you can take it like a tablespoon of that a day with some with some honey or uh, lemon or something like that lemon juice put back stuff that uh, helps with nausea and constipation diarrhea uh, just all kinds of things like that if you're you know if you're shut in if there's a grid down or a lockdown and you can't get out to the stores these are things you really need in your uh, medicine cabinets uh, let's see let's roll on down here cold and flu relief uh, and salt is something you got to have in your pantry at all times salt's great for gargling for sore throat and things like that not just for uh, uh, flavoring food uh, zinc lozenges uh, a nebulizer is a good thing to have on hand saline absolutely saline uh, and saline nasal spray are good things to have uh, hydrocortisone cream for any kind of itching that you get into poison ivy or anything like that 
calamine lotion is also good for poison ivy and other itches. Uh, antibacterial cream and sprays, we've shown that in our videos. Um, burn gel, if you get burnt, you need something to soothe that burn with and to help it heal up quicker. Uh, you need to, to consider uh, women's health when you're in lockdown uh, or with a grid down like that. You need to put this stuff back, things like for yeast infections, uh, bacterial infections, UTIs, all that kind of stuff that women have difficulties with or problems with sometimes, these things need to be stocked back. You need to think about this stuff ahead of time. Uh, blood pressure cuffs to keep, you know, keep a check on your blood pressure if you have a history of that. Scaffolds, I know that sounds extreme, but there may come a time that you may need a scaffold to cut something open to get something out of it. Uh, tweezers, uh, digital thermometers, uh, mercury thermometers, whatever you may be able to find there. Uh, a pen light is invaluable. Eye wash or saline solution. Uh, and alcohol, of course, alcohol for cuts and abrasions. Electrolyte for energy. And you need to, if you ever break something, uh, uh, you know, your ankle or foot or something, an immo Im immobilization boot. Uh, works with that and these things are invaluable your wrist braces your elbow braces your ankle braces your knee braces any kind of brace like that that you can put in your uh, pack would be good to have on hand a sling for your arm a dental first aid kit and they sell those little uh, uh, little bitty jars of filling for your teeth at Walmart that you can buy them in the dental department and those things are invaluable if you have a feeling come out and to fill that uh, to fill that feeling in with uh, gloves, guys. These are just things, some of the things that you really need to have in stock. And if you don't have these things, I would highly encourage you to get those things now and get them put back in your first aid kit. Everybody needs a first aid kit because as this thing winds down and the further we go into it there is so much going on and this is just one of the many things that is going on not only do we need to prep our pantries but we need to prep our first aid kits and make sure that we have what we need to uh, to doctor ourselves and our families so again thank you folks for stopping by today don't forget our locals page where we talk about things that uh, we can't talk about here on YouTube and uh, we discuss a lot of issues over there going on around the country and around the world. It's, a, it's just a good place to share information. If you can support us over there, we'd appreciate it. If you can't, at least become a member and uh, check out our videos. And folks, again, we thank you. Don't forget, as we always say, we hope that you're prepped. We pray that you prep your soul, your spiritual being and welfare and your pantry everything needs to be prepped and ready and until the next time we'll see you in the next video